Hello everyone. I'm getting in a rut here. I'm staying in the same spot all the time. I'm finding that I'm having to restrict my movement because of my knee. That's all right. God will change the scenery around me in about a month and a half. Well, I will change it before that because I will be out of here. I've just gone ahead and booked my remaining eight or nine days at this site for this month. I've got a gap in between. i got to get out, but I'm done. And then hopefully I will be booking my next long-term stay at the place I stayed last year long-term, assuming they haven't raised the price too much. Okay, so we were talking about God. I, I took a break and went and talked about the rapture because when my numbers start going down, it's because YouTube's messing with the algorithms. So I am, uh, I stuck that in there to try to jolt them back into an, a good filter again. We'll see if it works. Everything's plummeting. It, they do this occasionally. Where it's just, it's nose diving. Within a month, I won't have any viewers. Obviously, that doesn't happen because I'm still here, but it does this and then it dumps, comes back up again eventually. If I can get that to start sooner, I can keep my numbers up. If I don't keep my numbers up, they uh, don't help to increase my viewers. People don't know I'm out here. They won't put them up on, on a site where you can, you know, you go to the main page and you go down and you put a filter in. You can say, search for this. I won't ever show up. But they can't completely do that because if that were to totally happen, uh, they'd lose, everybody would go over to one of the other sites. But they're playing the little game. Let's see how much we can get away with. I really hate the people doing these filters. And I ask for your prayers for me to that, so that I don't hate the people doing the filters. It's not nice. But they're working for Satan, and Satan owns pretty much everything on this planet now. Okay, let's get into this. So we were talking about God. I'm going to get back to that again. God is so big, I could pretty much talk about him the entire time. But to keep with my channel, I'm going to throw a few rapture videos in. At this point, we want to talk about predestination, sort of. We're not totally predestined, but we God does know when he created everything, he created the entire timeline. He can re created our entire life, everybody's entire life on this earth. If he has the, each hair in our head numbered, he knows what we're going to do during each day. And he set up the most perfect life we could imagine. We just don't accept it. And we go off and do our own thing because we're really not 100% sure about God and what he wants us to do. Even though the Bible's there, it doesn't say, you will go get a job as an engineer or a doctor or a plumber or whatever, and you will work at this company and you will do this. It doesn't get into that kind of detail. So we have to kind of follow the instructions as best we can, but we don't know. I am thirsty. Okay, so I'm titling this one God A to B. Point A to B. He's got a plan for our life. We're all predestined. We're going to go from birth to death, and we're going to end up in heaven. But what's in between? He has a perfect plan for us, step by step. But what's in between, he won't tell us unless we're paying attention to him and listening to him and asking for help. If we're doing our own thing, he's going to let us do it. At any point in time, if we say, oops, we got carried away, I wasn't listening to you, 
help me get back on track, he will. He's got our timeline laid out, and if we're 100 miles away, he'll bring us back where we need to be and put us back on the timeline that he laid out for us. He knows what our likes and dislikes are. He knows what type of people we like, what kind of books we read, what kind of movies we watch. He, wa he knows everything about this life that we have down here, and it's laid out perfectly. You want to have a happy life? Accept God's timeline. But we don't. Not consistently. And like I said before, like with the prodigal son, with God, we don't have to actually come back to the Father's house like he did. He was in a different district, different town, different country. He finally, he came all the way back. That's symbolic of us just returning to God. And all we got to do is just turn around from wherever we're going the wrong way, and God's right there. We don't have to physically traverse back. And he can get us back on the timeline. You ever done this where you're driving along and you've got your GPS up there on your phone or whatever, and it's telling you to turn left, and you decide you're going to go straight. So you're supposed to go this way, and you decide to go straight, because you know that there's a light over there that is really long, and the traffic's light, and you're better off to go straight. The phone should know all that. If it's God, it should know exactly where we need to be. But our GPS isn't God. So, instead of turning left, we go straight. We go up to the next light, and then we turn left. And during that course, you see the GPS, you know, recalculate. And it used to say recalculating while it was going crunch, 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 crunch. Nowadays, it's just so instantaneous, is as soon as you go straight and it realizes you've gone straight, it immediately changes the, the blue line comes over and is following where you're at, and it recalculates the time. Well, God is like that to a degree, only God knows exactly where we're supposed to be at all times, and he knows about the traffic, and he knows about maybe there's an accident over there that maybe the phone doesn't know about yet. He knows everything, so his way is always the best way. But we don't deliberately, willfully try to disobey God, but we get sidetracked. Squirrel, you know, I do it all the time here. I'm sitting there looking like this, and all of a sudden, what is that over there? You know, I'm doing it all the time. There's always something here to distract me. I had a Subway sandwich for lunch, and it had just made me so thirsty. There must have been salt in there that I couldn't taste that was in the ingredients. I went to the P.O. box today, my P.O. box in town, so I've got uh, my last trip at the VA. They put me back on my blood pressure medication. I'm borderline most of the time, but because I'm in pain, it's running a little high, so they put me back on that to keep it down. They gave me some, uh, I guess it's aspirin cream. Uh, it's not been gay or anything like that, but it's some kind of other gel to put on my knee to help the pain from that while we're waiting for them to schedule everything. So well, anyhow, God is the Alpha and the Omega, which is the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. Uh, Aleph to Tav if you want to go Hebrew, but it doesn't matter. The, everybody knows the Greek version. The bottom line is we're on that timeline. Every human being is a section in that timeline. And they're stacked up, you know, many Christians are alive at any given time. <clears throat> Each one of us has a perfect life laid out for us. We just got to stay focused on God. So, um, technically it's called predestination, but it's not like we don't have a choice. In between, we have all the choices. We can deny God, we can choose our own path, everywhere we want to go. Now, I think that there's a limit. God won't let us do anything that would take away our eternal life. If we're a Christian, we've got eternal life. By definition, it's eternal life. It can't end. So once you've got it, you've always got it. In between, you can create your own bad environment. 
whatever you get into sin-wise, it can create your own bad environment. And God will rescue you every time you ask for help. If you don't ask for help, he just may have a limit that may be, you know, to stop you from doing something that might kill you. But a lot of times he's just going to let you go ahead and do that if that's what you want to do. He loves us so much that he lets us do stupid things. Because that's our will. And he won't go against it. So, as we are going down this timeline, and we jump off from time to time, no matter how many times we do it, you know, they asked, how many times should I forgive my brother? 70 times 7 a day. And that was just a big number. It basically means as often as need be. And Jesus is the ultimate forgiver. And he died for our sins, so as soon as you confess your sin to him, it's gone. Never to be brought up again. So it's not like, you know, it's like when you go to a, a, watch a court th TV thing. And it's like, well, he has a past history of this. Well, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter how many times he's done this in the past, how many times he's robbed the banks. Sometimes it does. I don't know how the, you can bring in pre-existing conditions like that, but I've seen him a lot of times disallow testimony because this current case is being tried on its own. Did he do something bad in this particular instance? That's what we're looking at. And so basically everything that we stand up to Jesus for, we're standing up as if we are pure as water prior to that, regardless of what we've done. So, you know, it's like they say, the best laid plans of mice and men. We can really have a plan for our life on earth as if God doesn't exist. And at the very end, when we're all done and I've, I've reached all my personal goals, I'll turn back to God and then I'll die. That's not how this was laid out, people. The Creator loves us and wants to spend time with us. He walked the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. He wants to spend time with us. He doesn't want to be apart from us. When you love somebody, you want to spend as much time as you can with them. And God's the same way. So, he doesn't set out to make our life difficult. <clears throat> now, he may put trials in place so that we learn. The quicker you learn, the less trials that you need in that area. But if you're fighting all the way, Trials may never let up. You go, why is my life so bad? Because <clears throat> you won't turn it over to God. And sometimes things that we start have to finish. If you get caught robbing a bank, you're going to have to go to jail. <coughs> you may get out on good behavior, but you're going to have to go to jail. God's not going to interfere in some of that stuff. <coughs> Ah, dry. Feels very dry today. It doesn't feel humid at all. I think we got rain coming in tomorrow, but not today. And it's not a big storm. It's just there's bits and pieces of it broken up across the south, coming across us. So. Why do we often do what we do, opposing God? It's usually self-centered. It's prideful. We want to look good. We want to be able to be known for something. Having God know you personally is more important than any personal relationships you have down here. These won't last. This whole earth won't last. So focus on your relationship with God. That's more important than anything else you got going. Ah. <coughs> Stop coughing. Okay. So, 
God is used to dealing with every type of human being alive and has ever been alive and has ever had ambitions to do things. He knows how to deal with everything. <clears throat> but it's like when we're dealing with kids, little kids. Don't touch the fire. I see this a lot when I'm out here camping and they've got little kids out here and they're sitting around. The very first time a kid sees a fire, they're just, ah, it's amazing. So don't touch the fire, you get burnt. <clears throat> if you t turn your back for too long, they're going to stick their hand in the fire. It's going to burn. They're going to start screaming. They still haven't necessarily pulled their hand out. Auto reflex might do it, but they haven't connected it yet. So then you got to go pull them aside, get them to stop crying, put something on it so that the burn isn't too bad, but it's going to hurt for a few while. See, I've got a little burn on my wrist right there because I reached across my heater to get something. And I put my arm down on the top of the heater just for an instant. And that was all it took to burn that. Things that are bad for us usually hurt to remind us not to do it. God should be enough, but sometimes we have to get our own feedback working. And you ask the kid, why did you touch the fire? I, was, I just wanted to find out for myself. Sometimes God says, don't do that, and we just want to find out why. It's not necessary to know why all the time. Just trust God. And if they're crying too much and, they, and they're embarrassed, and you try to help them, they might say, leave me alone. Only they would say it, leave me alone, because they're embarrassed and they don't want to deal with it. So, you know, if you recognize that's what's going on, they're not mad at you, they're mad at themselves. They're not listening, but they don't want to admit that, so they don't want to talk about it. Okay, so God has to go through this millions of times a day, you know. It's, he's got to have an infinite amount of love and patience to do that. Let's look at some verses here, just so we can tie all this stuff in. Turn with me to Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God cares for us and he wants us to have peace, no evil, and a future with hope. The Old Testament. He hasn't changed. So let's move to the New Testament. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So if we're Christians, that's the calling, everything will work together for our good. Even if we get in and muck it up first, God will re-navigate as we try to find our way through Things happen all the time that we don't connect. Back to driving again. I'm trying to get to a spot. I left with plenty of time, and I'm going straight down this road. I've had this happen. And the navigator turned me off of that road onto a side road. And I maybe a freeway I was going down, and it gets me off the freeway onto a side road. <clears throat> and I'm going, this is slow. I want to get back on the freeway. I did this one time. This was the end of spring break. Everybody coming back from Florida. There were around 30 accidents on the stretch of highway that was between me and home. I'd go out. I'd get tired of being on the side. I'd go back to see if I'd gotten around it. And it's still there. This is when I was new with the GPS and didn't understand it well. And thinking, what this, what's this program doing? It doesn't know what it's doing. Now I've learned to trust it more. Or at least to verify it. If it says, you know, to get off, zoom out, and look at the whole run. It was red pretty much the entire route. 
So I got one of the old, you know, county state routes, the two lane roads, and got on it and drove all the way home with that. It added some time, but at least I was moving. That's called faith. And we have to build it up a little bit. Sometimes we don't have enough. And keep yourself flexible. I was determined I was going to go up the freeway because I could just sit there and I was tired. I was just going to coast. I didn't have to think a whole lot. I wasn't dead tired to where I was falling asleep, but I was just comfortably relaxed in my seat, just driving up the freeway. No, I had to get off on the side and start paying attention and noticing I was driving through towns with lights and, you know, and there was some other traffic that had also got off the freeway to do the same thing I was doing. And some of them kept doing the same thing. They'd pull over towards the freeway and then have to turn around and come back. We were all doing the same thing. Faith. Proverbs 16, 9. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Even when we're doing it on our own, God's in there trying to, you know, shuffle things around, move things out of the way for us as we come barreling through. He's still trying to help, but he'd rather get us back on the road that we want to be on. But if for some reason we can't, you go ahead and you pick the perfect way for us to get back. How are we doing on time? I've been doing about it. I'm trying to do about a 20 minute video. Everybody seems to like the shorter format. I can't go too much shorter than that because I can't get enough said. If I go over 30 minutes, I'm sure people don't watch the end of it because I watch how many people. I can see who's watching, how much time they're watching. And of course, YouTube is messing with the filters right now, so all the numbers are all messed up. They're all on a downward trend. I do want to take the time to really thank those that have contributed to my fundraiser. By now it's over when you get to see this. I didn't reach the full goal, but by reaching three-fourths of it, I can go ahead and get started on all the things that need to be done. Some of the things I need for my campsite, some of it's to keep my car running. I didn't do anything to it last year because I didn't work, and I should have tried to do a little bit. And you put things off, they snowball, and then you're having to deal with all the, all the snow all at once. So we did enough good on that that I'm going to feel comfortable about going forward. I've got to trust and have faith in my car and in my equipment that I've got. I've patched my tent that the rats ate into. That's working fine. It's not leaking. I found that this is another camping tip. I got that flex seal, that can of stuff that they sprayed on the bottom of the boat. It comes in black, white, and clear. So I sprayed the clear on my tent to seal up the area that I had to patch, and it's not leaking. Before, I had it sewn in, and it was a little bit of stickiness on it to hold it in place, but it was leaking just a little bit. It's not leaking now. I've also learned that the side flaps that pull out on it, I should get my video over after we're done, and just show you some camping stuff. By having them out, the air goes underneath and keeps things, you know, the air blowing. Well, if it's cold, it's cold air blowing through. And if your tent's wet, you've got to get it to dry out. So that lower air helps to dry your tent out. I found I've got a small hole in my bottom plastic someplace. I saw it when it was in the bag, and then when I opened it up, I couldn't find it again. It's a tiny hole, but it would leak if it got water running underneath my tent. So I've got to find that. So the next time I take it apart, I'm going to flip it upside down and go looking for that. You've got to patch these things. You've got to keep doing your maintenance on whatever else, whatever the things that you need. You've got to have maintenance. Thought I heard somebody walking. 
I'm going to take the camera around a little bit and just show you stuff. They chopped a whole bunch of trees down. I'm going to go look at those and just see what they look like. Everything to be keep us safe here. State parks are my recommendation. You know, your state may have more or less than what we do. It doesn't matter. They're all basically the same. They're governed by basically the same type of people. I don't like the government in general, but the people that take care of parks, they're good people for the most part. All right, we're still waiting. Is it Passover? Still Feast of Trumpets? What is it? Something this year. It's big. Our commander in chief has been up to talking again and continuing to show his inability to lead. They may actually replace him before the election. We'll see what happens. The new guy won't be any better. He certainly isn't going to fix things. The only ones to fix things would be the big T, and I can't say his name because they'd filter me for sure. He's the only one that fixes things, and they're going to do anything in their power, anything, from murder to thievery to lying. It doesn't matter. They're not going to give up their power base unless they know that whoever gets in is going to have their hands tied and can't do anything. But they really don't want to delay. They want to keep moving things in the direction that they want to go. So be ready. Be prepared. Till we meet in the clouds. God bless. Here's my tent. And you can see I've got my little patch that I put on here. It's duct tape because it's good and strong. I sewed it in place, and then I sprayed it with the Flex Seal so it doesn't leak. This is the flap that you're supposed to keep open if you want air to come in underneath and dry things out if it's wet or just air it out. But if the wind is blowing cold, it makes your feet cold. So by letting it collapse like that, that string is supposed to be on a nail, which is right in there someplace. I got some of my lights back again. And we're going to walk over this direction. There's nobody here. Even the host families are out running around. They've got a small Class C, which is the bigger than a truck, but smaller than a bus version. Back in there is where they cut all the trees down. I haven't actually been in that area yet since they cut them down, so we'll find out as I head back down there. It's a short walk. I used to camp at this particular site all the time, but then when I got my satellite, you can see there's some more. These are for smaller RVs, pop-up trailers. You can put a tent there, but they cost about $10 a night more. Coming down into here, it's the site that's in the back. There's electricity in every site for these here at this park. Every park is different, but they have water. This particular spigot is here for a reason. You open this up and out comes water. But it's not immediate because the valve is actually in the ground. The reason for that is it won't freeze that way. Now, look at all the trees down over time. Some of these are the ones that he just cut down. Setting up a path. They really need to come in here and frankly get rid of these. You know, they're stacking up some of the wood. They can come in here and burn some of this stuff in the fire. They've tried already some of it. They've got fire pits. But look at all this. It's just... And I think that's probably... But like, see that tree right there? It's not full. It's already broken. And this one over here, no bark on it leaning. 
They could have taken it down, but it's not going to fall this way. The pine trees get pine beetles. And if they get into it, they start burrowing holes and it actually kills the tree. Like that tree over there with the bark off of it. Unfortunately, the really the only way to get rid of them is to cut the trees down. But don't leave them on the ground. If you leave them on the ground, they'll continue to eat the down trees. I hear a woodpecker someplace back over there. When the wind blows, the tops of these trees could sit there and those trees sway quite a bit and they hit each other and you can listen to that. There's electricity at the sites. Uh, we got two circuits. There's breakers there which are currently off. So I run two extension cords into my tent. So I've got two lines that I can hook into for my heaters. That's an unusual way for the tree to grow, but that's a hardwood. So it's probably okay. If that was a pine, it wouldn't be any good. Because hardwoods will bend. more trees they cut down, trying to keep things safe. There's another tree back in the back with no bark, another tree with no bark. You know, you think about it, it's the reason that we have so many armadillos here. They're after these pine beetles and any other grubs they can get their mouth on to. They're not a carnivore per se, they don't have teeth like that, but they eat worms and grubs and anything they can get their mouth on. All right, that's enough of the tour. Way in the back is another bathroom comfort station. That one's the public one. And there's trails that are in the back behind these trees here. Come on out, it's actually pretty nice right now. It's not completely spring yet. But we're getting in the 50s. I think we've got a couple of 60s coming up after the rain. It's nice. And you don't have to worry about a lot of people right now. The closer you get to summer, the more people will be here. Okay, I'm headed back. There's my car and my tent. You can see them in the trees. And this here where the soil has been turned up, there's been an armadillo in here foraging. They're okay out here, but if you get one in your yard, they will tear it up, dig up your grass, dig up your flowers, leave a mess. You can trap them and get them out of there. It's about all you can do. There's some things you can put down that they don't like the smell of that will drive them maybe to your neighbor until they do the same thing and then they come right back. So you're better off to just trap them and take them someplace. Okay. Blessings, everyone.